Friends, hi, it's Pastor Shannon. I hope you're having a good week this week. We are still in Lent. Here we are now in the fifth week of Lent. Next week is Holy Week. And so behind you, you can see here in the Fellowship Hall are signs of the Stations of the Cross exhibit uh, that we will be opening for you next week, Holy Week, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I uh, warmly invite you to come and experience this um, special exhibit. But hear the good news for this week. Every week is a new week, another chance to say, here I am, use me. Every day is a new day, another chance to say, thank you for yesterday, thank you for tomorrow. Every hour is a new hour, another chance to say again and again, make me new. We don't come to God to stay the same, do we? We come to God to be changed. And so the theme for reflection here on this fifth week of Lent is this, again and again, we are reformed. Now here's the inf interesting thing. Um, in her book, The Great Emergence, How Christianity is Changing and Why, author and religion professor Phyllis Tickle asserts that about every 500 years, the church goes through a giant rummage sale, a time of rapid reformation in which many cultural and religious practices get reconsidered and tossed out. That places us then in the midst of a contemporary reformation. So, if we think about Reformation as this journey that we get to take where we let the old fall away for something new to emerge, for our ability to return to God's words over and over and being drawn deeper into the heart of God, then we can see truly it is good news that again and again, we are being reformed. What I want to share with you today is a passage from John chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. So I invite you to listen to that, and then we'll have a time of reflection and prayer. John chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it's for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Now, Reverend Denise Anderson, who put together this amazing liturgy for the Stations of the Cross exhibit that we are going to experience during Holy Week, she's reflected on this passage in John 12. And what she notes is here we are in John 12, verses 20 through 33, we're in the week where Jesus is crucified. And at this point, um, Jesus' lore has been growing and visiting Jews from the diaspora are seeking him out. And in the midst of that, Jesus brings a vision. 
in order for the seed to bear fruit, it must die. So those who follow Jesus must go where he goes. Whoever tries to retain their life will ultimately lose it. This is troubling to the people and to the disciples because the Messiah was expected to live forever. And here comes Jesus again defying expectations. But for those who were worried, there's also this voice from heaven confirming Jesus's identity. This passage also reflects this notion. Change, even when welcomed, means death. So I invite you to let that statement sink in for you. How do you feel about it? Change, even when welcomed, means death. I wonder if there are certain memories or events that it recalls for you. I wonder if you can think of healthy ways to navigate change. Sometimes there's ways to think about the pain that we experience and there's dirty pain and there's clean pain. And that's very deeply related to this notion of healthy ways to navigate change. Clean pain, healthy ways to navigate change. So I invite you right now to take a sheet of paper and quickly make a list of everything that you can think of that either creates or maintains the status quo. Maybe this is the status quo of the church or the local community, society, your family. Name anything that comes to mind. Then on a separate sheet of paper, make a list of things that disrupt or dismantle the status quo. Similarly, just name anything that comes to your mind. Once you've done this, and you've got your two different lists, take an inventory of what you've written down on both those sheets of paper. And as you inventory what you've written down, I invite you to consider where is the spirit at work? Where do you see reformation in action? And how might you be able to get in on it? So here and receive this closing benediction. As you go in your week this week, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart trust its worth. May your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go with courage, go with heart, go in peace. Amen.